friends. I recently made some thank you cards for my customers for their online orders um, this past month and posted a photo of the cards that I sent out on my Facebook page. And I actually had a few comments about could I do a video for this card and especially my friend Mim really wanted a video so Mim this is also for you so for this card the card base I'm using is a piece of old olive which measures when folded four and a quarter by five and a half so I'll just go ahead and do that and then set it aside Take my trusty bone folder to give it a good crease and then I'm also using some watercolor cardstock from Stampin' Up. This is a 140 pound weight. It's really fun cardstock to use, all kinds of techniques you can do with it. And I'm using my Aqua Painter. And the markers I'm using for this technique are Wild Wasabi, Melon Mambo, Tempting Turquoise, and Calypso Coral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribble my markers directly onto this plastic piece. Now, if you don't have the stamp from a jig and a sheet of plastic like this, just use a baggie, something like that. It's totally fine. And you want to start with your lighter color first. So in this case, it's my wild wasabi. So I'm literally just scribbling it randomly all over my piece of plastic. My Calypso Coral. Then my melon mambo. And lastly, my tempting turquoise. Oops. All right, so we're going to set that aside for a second. I'm going to take our watercolor paper and I'm taking my aqua painter, which of course has the water in it. Get that water flowing by squeezing it a little bit. And I'm just going to wet a portion of the paper, so basically the size of my piece of plastic. So I'm being generous with the water. I'm just squeezing my aqua painter as I'm brushing it onto the paper. Okay, so that looks good. So now I want to moisten this and you could use that with a bottle of water or just use your Stampin' Mist, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just spritzing on some of that mist <clears throat> and you're going to see that the ink starts to spread. That's what you want. And you're just going to flip it right over onto your paper and you're just going to push it down. Just kind of hold it there for a second because you want the paper to absorb that ink. So I'm just kind of pushing it down and when you lift off your plastic there's not going to be very much ink left on it because it's all gone into the paper. So that's pretty cool. You can leave it like that if you wanted to or you can take your aqua painter and just kind of like blend some of that in. What I like to do is I'm going to grab my wild wasabi ink and squeezing it so I've got some ink in the lid. Taking my aqua painter and then I just like to kind of color in those empty areas because it just pulls in a different color and it looks really pretty. And once you have all your ink on here, you're going to want to set this aside to dry. You can use your heat tool if you want to speed it up. Okay, hopefully you can see how pretty that is on the camera and you can do a lot of different things with this background. So once this is dry, we're going to do some embossing on it. And I'm going to be using one of our new stamp sets from Stampin' Up! called Timeless Textures. Absolutely fabulous set. I know I've used this in other videos too. And I'm going to grab the swirl stamp. And I'm just going to ink this up with my first mark. And just start stamping it randomly all over the paper. And I know you can't see this on the camera, but you're definitely going to see it once I emboss it. I can't even see it as I'm stamping. <laughs> All right, so now that I have my image stamped, I'm taking my gold embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle that all over my piece. And 
and I didn't use my embossing buddy on this um, which usually prevents you from getting embossing powder where you don't want it because I'm going to be fine if I have little bits of gold embossing powder just kind of scattered here and there. It's kind of the look I'm going for. So I can see where I've stamped and the empty areas. So now I'm just going to take the same stamp and fill in those empty spots. And I'm turning my stamp around different directions as I go along. And again, cover that with embossing powder. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the swirls that I have. Next, I'm taking the splatter stamp that's from the same stamp set, Timeless Textures, and I'm going to fill in some more of those gaps. This is kind of fun because you're going outside of the lines, you don't have to be too particular, it's just literally stamping and having fun and letting the embossing and that watercolor do the magic for you. So you can see where some of those spots are. Now, I obviously wiggled my stamp a bit because you can kind of see like some lines from around the, the rubber image. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want the lines there, I'm just taking a little paintbrush and just brushing it off. And then just blow off that powder. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. Now it's time to do the um, heat setting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, look how pretty that is. And you really want to make sure that you've got all your embossing and powder melted. So just kind of turn your paper around in the light and you'll see if you've missed places, which I have. I can see that I've missed right in here. So I'm just going to go back with my heat tool and melt that powder. There. So super pretty. I love the colors with the gold. Really, really nice. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this, I mean, of course, you can cut it and use it as a background for your cards, but I'm going to use my Petite Petal Punch to punch out some flowers. So I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of this piece. And, of course, I'll be cutting off this end and using this part for something else. So I'm just going to punch out three flowers for now. Next I'm taking my early espresso ink pad and a sponge and I'm going to sponge the edges of these flowers. That really makes a big difference. Just gives them that definition that they need. I hope you can see. Now to finish the flowers I'm going to put on a rhinestone in the center of each one. And now I'm just going to put a stamp and dimensional on the back and then set it aside. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp on my strip of Whisper White. And this measures two and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'm using the same stamp. I'm going to use that. We're also going to use the leaf image from What I Love Celebration Stamp Set. And I'm going to stamp it using Old Olive so that we can pull out the color of the card base that we're using. I'm just kind of stamping it randomly. There. Next, I'm taking my crumb cake. Love crumb cake. And I'm using the coffee rings, as I call it, from the Timeless Texture stamp set. And in my crumb cake, I'm just stamping that randomly. And I'm not going to re-ink it. I'm just going to kind of stamp it off a little bit so I have some that are darker than others. Now also using crumb cake, I'm going to use the swirl, but I want to stamp it off because I don't want it to be too dark on my card. I want it to be really soft. And right now I'm just filling in the white portions. Okay. Now I'm going to use the same stamp with Early Espresso. And I'm just stamping it in the darker, just on the bottom and on the side. I'm leaving the top and this side without some of this 
dark stamping here. And again, I'm turning my stamp around as I go. Now I'm taking my wild wasabi and using the same splatter stamp that we used earlier, I'm just going to stamp just a few of those splatters on here. And going back to the What I Love stamp set, there's a tiny little flower stamp that I'm going to use, and I'm going to stamp that using my Eclipse of Coral. Then I only, whoops, that didn't stamp all the way, so thank goodness for clear stamps. Go right on top. I'm only going to stamp three of these. I'm going to take my blender pen and just pull that ink into the petals. And then I'm going to take my Melon Mambo and just make a little center in each one. Now, before we put the flowers on here, I'm going to be using this stamp from Timeless Textures using the crumb cake going along the same edge. This is such a fun stamp. Kind of does all the shading work for you. Okay, that's what I have. And now we can just stick our flowers on there. And I kind of got carried away with my stamping and covered over my leaves. <laughs> I bet I'm not the only one that's ever done that. So there's my flowers. So now I'm going to set this aside and taking my um, old olive card base, I'm using my modern mosaic embossing folder and I'm going to run this through the Big Shot. But I'm only going to put my embossing folder in about three quarters of the way because of course once I've embossed it, this is going to go on that end. So I'm going to run that through my Big Shot. So now it's nicely embossed and I have my snail behind this white bit and I'm just going to line that up on the edge, put that on and if there's any little excess just trim that up. All right, so that's what I have so far. And I'm really missing the little leaves, <laughs> so I'm actually going to stamp them on some Whisper White and then tuck them in there. So I will do that in a few minutes. What I want to do first, though, is something that's really fun. So I'm taking some sticky strip, and I'm just placing my sticky strip right along the edge of that white bit. I'm going to trim that off with my scissors. And then you want to take your nail or you can take your bone folder, either way, and you want to rub that down really, really well. And today's bonus on this card is the piece of my cat's fur in the tape. Just kind of a nice way for my cat to get his touch on my card. Anyways, we're going to peel that off. Peel that strip off. Then I'm taking a piece of computer paper tucking it underneath and our gold stamp and glitter just a beautiful fine like gold dust glitter just love it sprinkling it on and then what I like to do is just kind of push that glitter into that tape and then tap off the excess and then you have a really pretty gold border who would have thunk it so pretty. All right, so let's pour this back in the container. I need to get a plastic container for these. I like, as you can tell from my embossing powder, I like having the big containers with the spoons. It just makes it easier. And yes, I just shook that excess glitter onto the carpet. I don't see anything wrong with that. That's what makes my craft area such a happy little craft area. All right, let's get to those leaves. We need to add some leaves there. All right, I have my leaves cut out. So I ended up putting my 
greenery not actually where I stamped <laughs> and I think it turned out all right so now it's time to stamp for sentiment so again using a piece of scrap paper I'm actually going to use the picture perfect stamp set and I'm using the verse you are made of wonderful and this is the sentiment that I used on my thank you cards for my customers because I do think that my customers are pretty darn wonderful and I want them to know that so stamp it down in my melon mambo and trim that out with my scissors I should mention that while I'm filming this, I have my crock pot full of soup and it smells amazing. So I'm going to put the recipe on my blog because it's too good not to share. And I also have homemade dinner rolls rising. So I'm going to put that recipe up there too. That's the beauty of having a crock pot. It gives you more time to stamp. So I'm putting a couple dimensionals behind the banner. And I'm just going to tuck that right behind the flower. Whoops, it works better if you peel off the backing. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, there we go. And now I'm just making a little bow using my old olive baker's twine. I absolutely love our baker's twine. I use it a lot. Now I'm going to grab a glue dot, pick it up with my paper snips, and kind of fold it over a little bit. I'm just going to stick it right there put my bow a bit on a slant and the last thing to do is actually lift up the petals in your flowers so you get a bit more of a 3d look to them really hope you enjoyed that and have fun playing with the watercolor paper because of course you can really get different colored flowers depending on the inks that you use and the embossing so pretty and if you use different punches you're going to get you know the bigger flowers that really showcase all the beautiful colors on that watercolor paper so you seriously can never get bored with stamping that's for sure so i hope you enjoyed that card and i appreciate you thank you for watching and happy stamping